We're not getting into politics here on a Friday show, and I know that the, uh, the, the, the huddle has been toxic on this Friday morning speaking about all that stuff, but I mean, you, you have to recognize in 2020 as a head football coach in college football that there is sensitive subject matters that's going to affect your locker room. And all of that is a feeling that is put forth by the relationship that you have with your team. And that's why I was saying in the break, and we were talking, you'll never find Ed Ogeron in this, in this predicament, in my opinion. I, I just don't think that you'll ever find him publicly having to backtrack on anything that he said to the public that may be misconstrued about his team because his team and he have a great relationship where they're talking about all this stuff first. The reason why Ogeron, two Tuesdays ago, didn't make an announcement on how he felt about the protest and what was happening around college football was because he hadn't met with his team yet. And he told T-Bob and I, don't ask me anything about that because I'm not addressing anything publicly until I talk to my guys about it. And once he made the, the, the announcement in the Tuesday team meeting at 4 o'clock that afternoon, Ross Dellinger from Sports Illustrated had the story about what he told the team. That, that's all built on the relationship. The team has the trust of the head coach. They can look at him in his eyeballs and see how he feels when, when given the message. You don't have to see on social media your head coach wearing some T-shirt and the whole thing go up in flames because he doesn't know, he, he, he has no idea that how that's going to affect his crew or he doesn't have the wherewithal or the ego to put down that I'm going to wear this shirt, but I don't care how it affects my guys. And just like Cole said, you don't have, you don't have Hubbard at Oklahoma State. You don't have him on board and you lose the locker room. And then that's a, that's, that's a ripple effect, and that goes into now waves into recruiting, and people start to hear about that's the relationship that Gundy has with the team, and you start missing out on players in recruiting cycles, and you start getting three stars instead of four stars, two stars instead of three stars. Next thing you know, you're six and five, you're five and six, you're four and seven, you're out of a job. That's how that works. He went to CYA, cover your ass, because they said, Coach, you might lose that $5 million a year gig because you don't have any players. And he had to say, you know what? I got to come out and apologize. I mean, he, he, took the, the, he took page one from the Drew Brees book of apology. He never stopped doing it. It's all in relationships. It's all about the relationships that the coaches have with their players. And on the other side, that the players have with the coach in the program. Their voices at this time can be heard. They have power, but they are naive to believe that the, the football season will exist if a few people decide they're not going to play from the player standpoint. I, I think it, it, it's a two-way street. Respect. Relationships. I mean, all that stuff is, is, is two ways. I mean, you can't just give it without expecting it to receive it, and vice versa. But I think Mike Gundy was exploited in the fact that he's just got a bad relationship with his team. He doesn't know his team. He doesn't know his squad. And I could, I could argue that Dabo doesn't either. You don't need 13 minutes on social media explaining to me about your feelings and thoughts on what's going on in the world. Just go talk to your team, bro. You don't have to tell me. You've lost your team. And that's just a simple conversation on this is how I feel. How do you feel? Let's get to a neutral ground. Let's get to a point where we all respect one another. And let's keep that respect at the forefront. And to me, you know, we're biased. But I just think that LSU is doing that the right way because their coach is very real in the sense of this is how he feels. He understands how the team feels. And there's a guideline put in place where nobody's going to disrespect one another. I mean, it sounds simple. But when you look around, it looks very difficult to, to incorporate. Cole Kublik was great. If you missed it, check that out. That conversation was fantastic this morning.